Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive once again. Uh, today I got a 2014. This is a uh, Ford Super Duty. And uh, this is actually a company truck that I do uh, work on a lot of their fleet vehicles. You know, it's an oil-filled truck, so a lot of times when they bring me the trucks, they're, uh, they're really covered in a lot of dirt. This one's got a complaint of a misfire. This thing's running like a three-legged dog. Also, what I didn't like is that when I uh, went to move the truck inside the shop, uh, when I pushed the brake pedal, uh, it felt like I really didn't have any vacuum. It was really hard to stop the truck. You really have to put some force into the brake pedal to stop it. So let me go ahead and start this thing up so I can let you guys hear how this thing's running. Let me get inside. All right, and you can see uh, how many miles this truck has. And uh, yeah, these guys do a lot of driving back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. I don't know if you can hear that, the check engine light is on and man there's some serious knocking noise going on underneath the hood let me take you back under the hood here looks like that under hood light is kind of going crazy there i heard some really nasty knocking just a second ago i'm not sure if it's backfiring or knocking let's let the idle come down a little bit here Hear that? You hear that again? A little difficult for me to detect where that noise is coming from. Let me just open this box up to make sure it's not back popping through the intake here. Let me go ahead and move these clips over. We're going to open up this box. All right, so here we got the uh, air filter cover off, and uh, just wanted to see if. That noise was back popping through the intake. Let's take a listen here. All right, so it's pretty evident that the uh, the noise that we're hearing is uh, back popping through the intake here. Uh, so we definitely have a pretty bad misfire. What I want to do is I want to hook up the scan tool and we're going to try to narrow down what cylinder we're having a problem with and then we'll move from there. So I'm back inside the truck, um, got the uh, scan tool hooked up and uh, I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to check for any uh, codes. Just give it a second here. Alright so immediately, well we all know what this first code means, basically means that uh, uh, these guys were really in a hurry when they were making some deliveries, uh, but hey, you know that's just the way it goes. But uh, that I think that probably means that uh, the top speed was reached. <clears throat> but uh, not really too concerned with that. That uh, it's not really our problem that we're looking at. We want to pay attention to these misfires here. So we have a PO300 random cylinder misfire detected, and if you look, looks like we have cylinder misfires on two, three, four, five. And then we have a misfire detected on startup, uh, first thousand revolutions. So let's take a look at the actual misfire counters. I'm going to go ahead and start the truck up. <clears throat> and I guess one of the things I want to mention is uh, the reason I shut the truck off, guys, is that when you have a misfire, especially this bad, the amount of runtime that you want to have on this truck with the engine running, you want to keep it as minimal as possible because the longer that you expose the catalytic converters to uh, the uh, non-burned fuel, uh, the more damage you're going to do to the catalytic converters. So in just the time that you're taking to diagnose the truck, you don't want to have it running too long. So just start the truck up, do your checks, and then shut the truck back off. You know, Don't leave it running while you're grabbing your tool. <clears throat> Let's go under functional tests. Man, this truck is shaking really bad. Check our cylinder contribution. There's that back popping through the intake. I don't know if you can hear that. Wow, and if you look at our counters, this thing is going nuts here. Looks like there isn't really a cylinder that's not counting, except maybe this cylinder number six. It's probably the one that has the lowest value. Man, it's really, really running like a three-legged dog right now. Um, but I'll put it this way. This really seems to me like it's affecting 
both banks of the engine. Let's kind of check some data pits here and see what we can find. And the engine speed's pretty high, so looking at that mass airflow uh, grants per second, it's going to be a little bit high because it, it's it's on a, it's during a fast idle right now. So let's kind of go back out. I want to also do a data display. Let's check it check on some fuel trim values there's our long-term fuel trim numbers okay I don't see anything that stands out right there let's go under the uh, engine management data it's gonna do kind of a quick overview camshaft crankshaft sink cylinder head temperatures look okay system is in closed loop intake air temperature sensor looks okay <clears throat> our short trim on a uh, bank one there is pretty high versus a short trim on bank two well there it goes kind of evening out But it seems like we're running pretty lean here. Let's go to uh, camshaft timing data. And here's our error on the camshaft advance. But I don't see it going over a degree here. All right, so after doing an overview with the scan tool, um, I didn't really find anything that really stuck out to me, uh, indicating where a problem could be. Um, you know, a few of the things that I'm looking for are, of course, the uh, the fuel trim values. I'm looking for the misfire counters. I'm looking at the uh, the the cam phasers, uh, the uh, degree of error. Uh, you know anything that can indicate like what system we might be having a problem with now I understand like when you go through the scan tool and you're and sometimes when the numbers are just kind of doing stuff that don't make any sense you know you got misfire counters counting on all cylinders and you know it just looks like everything's going crazy the fuel trim values are jumping up and down they're opposing each other uh, they're not showing like you know what you would expect to see in a textbook uh, you know, that's just the way it is. Life isn't a textbook, man. And, and when you're out in the field doing the stuff, uh, you know, for a living, you're going to see that life just isn't like a textbook. Uh, so a lot of this stuff can get really confusing when you're looking at it, and it just doesn't really tell you anything. It doesn't point in one direction. We need to take it back to the basics here. So, I mean, where are my thoughts? Let me just overview my thoughts here for you guys. Um, well, for one, of course, we have a misfire. What kind of misfire do we have? Do we have like a low uh, a fuel pressure problem where we're not getting enough fuel to the engine? I mean, it's possible, but I, I really would put that on the lower end of the, the totem pole here um, because really when you have a fuel problem like that, you know, yeah, you'll have random misfires on all cylinders. You could have that uh, low power issues, but uh, to me, it feels more like an internal engine problem or a mechanical engine problem, should I say. Um, and the reason I say that is because, for one, I know that the engine vacuum is low. And the reason I know that is because when I push on the brake pedal, I have to push on it hard because there's no vacuum assist, because there's not enough vacuum being made by the motor. And it's possible that we could have a timing problem, maybe a bad timing chain, maybe uh, the, the timing has jumped. Uh, but looking at the spark uh, timing uh, on the scan tool, I didn't see anything excessive. Uh, again, looking at the, the degree of error on the camshaft phasers, I didn't see anything excessive. Uh, so to me, I'm really 
kind of pointing more toward uh, probably a broken valve spring. I mean, it's possible we could have a broken valve spring or maybe a, a bad valve um, causing you know low compression on, on a cylinder. I want to do a relative compression test on this thing, uh, but my amp probe is actually not working right now. I, I, ha I had to send it back to Snap-on to get it uh, fixed. Uh, and in the meantime, I did order one from AES Wave, but I'm, I'm waiting for that to come in, actually. So I'm in between uh, where I don't have a amp, an amp probe to do a relative compression test to make my life easier. But what I can do is a quick sound test. I'm going to do a clear flood mode where I'm going to put my uh, foot on the accelerator all the way to the floor. And then I'm going to crank the engine, and I'm going to listen for the way the engine cranks. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that and let you guys listen to it. Let me do that again. All right, so to me, it definitely sounds like we have a cylinder with low compression. Uh, first thing I wanna do is try to identify what cylinder uh, we might have low compression on. I really don't wanna have to pull each spark plug out and do a compression test uh, manually. Also, some of the Fords give you a relative compression test that's built into the scan tool, but this one actually doesn't show a relative compression test uh, that I can use in order to identify that. I really wish it did because that would make my life way easier, but it's just it's just not here. Um, so let, let's move on to the next step here. All right, so here we are under the hood doing a, a manual compression check. I could not locate a uh, amp probe locally for my lab scope, so it's got to kind of wait for the one to come in from online. Uh, so, <clears throat> so far, cylinder number one got 175 psi, 175 psi on cylinder number one, and uh, check out cylinder number two. Go ahead and crank it. It's good. Looks like number two is a dead hole. We're gonna move on to the next one. Now we're on cylinder number three. Go ahead and crank it. And you can see we're up to 160, 70, 80, about 185 on number three. Cylinder number four, go ahead and crank it. About 155 on number five. Go ahead and crank it. Cylinder number six, crank it. Cylinder number seven, crank it. And finally, cylinder number eight. Go ahead and crank it. All right, so we definitely have a problem with cylinder number two in particular. That is gonna be our dead hole. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try to get some shots of the inside of the cylinder. Uh, for that, I'm gonna be using the snap-on bore scope. This is the... Uh, BK 8500. It's the wireless, uh, the wireless version of this borescope. It also has a side view camera, so you can see straight and you can see from the side. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to get some actual footage from the camera, and then I'm gonna and let's see what we can find. All right, so we're going into the cylinder now. look at the top of the piston it looks like there could be some possible signs of damage from maybe a valve contacting the piston we do a quick spin around try to get 
get a good view of that. Yeah, we'll switch to a side view. Looks like we can see one of the valves. It's just hanging in there. If you look, you'll see one valve is seated, and the other valve, looks like the valve spring may have broken. So as you can see, we have a drop valve, uh, most likely from a broken valve spring. Next step is to remove this valve cover. All right, so with the valve cover removed, we can see where our problem is. That's our broken valve spring. Compare that to a good one. And again with our broken spring all right so we have the leak down tester all set we're going to go ahead and connect it to the uh, hose right here and i'm going to pull up on this valve to seat it and we're going to check for the amount of leak down it has all right so what we're showing is about 60 percent which is moderate right now i think we're okay to put a valve spring on this thing we're going to go ahead and get one on here and we'll come back so there's our broken valve spring came out in three pieces so here's a new valve spring there's the part number We're gonna go ahead and put this on. All right, so we got everything put back together, ready to start the truck up. Beautiful. That's a fix. Uh, just in case you guys are curious, this is the uh, tool that we used to get the valve spring on. Uh, actually worked really well the uh, tool is a Lyle part number 16750 just in case you were wondering you can check it out you can probably find these on Amazon anyways guys thank you for watching the video if you enjoy my content please subscribe to the channel if you like the video please like the video and if you have any questions you can always comment down below thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one